that's the whole point of personally my journey as a catalyst and conduit of my teachers to share this information to help pe people become more aware of the power the, the innate power they have inside them as the singular as the collective as the oneness that is the true nature of consciousness that's that's what it is it's like more people that awaken to this the higher the frequency the higher the the more mm -hmm. it comes in the more it expands people the more realization when other time in history my friend can you go and get on the internet look up yelp and have 500 reiki healers 500 energy healers mm -hmm. 500 psychics 500 i mean and the psychics that are on Yelp are, are real psychics, not the, hey, 1-800-call-a-scam mm -hmm. artist and I'll give you this generic response. I can feel it was your grandmother. It's a woman. There's a woman in the room. Yeah, how did you know? I knew there was a woman in the room. I could feel it. And she's telling you that she loves you. Well, she's not dead. Well, she's telling you that anyway because uh, who is <laughs> dead in your, who's dead in your family that's a woman? Oh, it's it's Aunt Jemima. Oh, well, that's it. That's her. That's her. That's who. That's who was coming through. I mean, that's not happening now. When you, no. when you dial up a psychic, you get real information. You're getting like people going, mm -hmm. "Yes, your loved ones are in the room, and they're sharing with me. Um, they didn't like it when you didn't give them, you know, um, the quarterback from their last uh, event at the local casino, and they're like, you can't, you can't Remember? get that information.' Yeah, how did how did how did you even know that? Yes, grandma's not very happy that you took her last quarter. And people are like, whoa, this is not mm. just mumbo jumbo ho hokey stuff. These people are getting direct source information and being able to relate it to someone else who's having an experience at, from another realm. And they're they're expressing themselves right there. And it's like, this is mm. really happening. This is real. Mm -hmm. It's not a figment of my imagination. So, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's so amazing. So when, when, when you, where you are in your journey right now in, in, do you just teach people? Do you heal people? What, what is the, mm -hmm. what do you sort of like, where, where are you at in your scope of what you share with the world? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's such a vast uh, array of what I do. So I don't like to be bored and I don't like to stick to one thing. And so I have uh, bits of everything. Um, so I like, I do a channeling class and I do it, uh, Saturday nights. And then I do a healing class on Monday nights. And then on Tuesday morning, we do a second channeling class for individuals in a different timeline zone. Um, and so when that came forward, um, I just got a message one day and somebody had inboxed me and said, do you have a channel in class? And I went to type back, no. And I heard in my head, yes. And I was like, what? I don't though. And they're like, you do now. And I was like, what? And she's like, they're like, tell her that you're going to invite her to um, ask questions because when she asks her questions, you're going to teach her how to channel and you're going to record it. And that's going to be your course, your channeling course. You have a channeling course. She's it. I was like, oh, so I, I pull her in, I interview her, we get all the content, we get the course uh, started to be formatted. And then they're like, now you need a community. I'm like, a community for what? They're like, well, when people take your course, you're not going to just leave them there, are you? And I was like, um, I guess not. <laughs> they're like, bring them to you. They want to know. You you stay with your people. You don't teach them something and then have them go off and you know become infected or corrupted or doing something. Like You have to teach them discernment. You have to teach them how to anchor. You have to teach them... like teach them don't just leave them and I was like okay what do you what do you want me to do they're like and so they guided the process of what I needed to do what I needed to say what I needed to post what I needed to create to put it together um and now yeah we every Monday we meet for an hour and a half and that has turned into the like not what I thought at all uh, I thought I was teaching people discernment and teaching people how to channel which it was initially what took place for six well maybe six to ten weeks that's what we did um, and now it's turned into grid work. It's turned into uh, finding the Stargate systems, looking at a map and seeing like this part actually doesn't belong here. And this part's actually not even geographically owned by the right place. Like this makes zero sense as to why this land is owned the way it is. 
and look at it. It doesn't even look like the rest of the landscape here. It's completely different. And you're like, that's part of a stargate. And it's like, yes. And we will go and remote view in, drop in, and we'll use our language to anchor in points. We will visualize the grid. And somebody might say, well, I, I, I see an animal. And I'll be like looking around. So last night when we did our, our connection together, it's really powerful because we all connect in. Um, because I've taught them, I have utmost trust and confidence in them because they are there with me and have gone along for that that 10 week where we're all growing and expanding and they're using my strategies and I'm overseeing and they've taken the courses. So it's, it's really a journey that they stay connected with me. So our, one of my, so my uh, facilitator, his name is Glenn. Again, when I was putting things together, I was, I was making everything and uh, I thought I was just doing it myself because I'm following direction, like just doing it. And they're like, you're going to have a, a male co-facilitator. I'm like, oh, so I don't know any males and I don't know any that would want to do this. And they're like, yeah, you do. We're going to send them over to your way. And uh, I, then I remembered, oh yeah, Glenn, I know Glenn. And they're like, Glenn is your co-facilitator. Uh, and so I called him up. I was like, hey, you know, when we did the All Shift Happily Now meditations, you asked if there was anything you could do to support and help. Well, I just wondered if you wanted to do a channeling class with me. And he was like, absolutely. Where do I show up? What do I have to do? Um, He was just like, all surrendered. If source said you had to do this, then like, I'm getting those messages. I'm I'm going to wherever we need to be. Let's let's do it. So he has had a road trip out to see Emery Smith, who is on Gaia. And so he does some like different tech things. So he had gone out there and happened upon an ancient like ground where it's all these um, like uh, hieroglyphics and petroglyphics and all these pictures of things. So he sent them, he called me, he's all out of breath. He's like, hey, you'll never guess what happened to this and this. And, and it's intermittent signal. And he sends me all these pictures and I'm like, whoa, what is this? So we bring it to our channeling class. So he comes back from his trip. He lands like 45 minutes before the channeling session starts. And um, he explains the scenario, what work he did. And it's right there by Las Vegas. So I pull it up on the map. I'm screen sharing with Where everybody. Got to Las Vegas? It's just, it was south of there. It's in this Sloan is... Canyon. All right. Sloan this Canyon. Is, this is so interesting because I'm out of Vegas. Okay. Right. And so we just they, did a lot of work there. Yeah. They, they, my teachers told me to move here many years ago because there were a lot mm-hmm. of pyramids there thousands of them all over mm-hmm. the place here and we go into the pyramids especially outside of vegas there's a cut there's about 45 50 miles outside of vegas and we go deep into the desert and it's like very very interesting my friend uh please continue but uh, uh yes. i've got some interesting <laughs> stories for you on that one yes so glenn was over there he did his little thing that he did came back i pull it up for our class to see And it's called Sloan Canyon. And you can see when you pull it up on a map, you're like, there is a little dude that's there. There's like, it it looks like a a little alien guy's laying flat on there. And I was like, that's interesting. So I'm standing there. There's a spot where there's water. So we start anchoring light, pulling energy, moving things through. I'm doing my light language and closing things and opening things. Um, and then Glenn says, I, I'm finished because I see it close. I see it all open. I see all the energy come out. And then we close it back. And I'm like, okay, it's anchored. It's good. So I'm standing there. Glenn is still talking about like, notice this. He's really good at guiding meditation. So he's like, notice how your feels. Notice what's happening with that. And I'm standing watching over everybody doing this. And I start to get this feeling that we're being watched. And so I like turn to my left. And sure enough, the little images off of the rocks is there was a being standing there watching. So I turn and I identify myself. He identifies himself. We were, we're talking backwards and forwards. And this is the first time this has happened because I'm in class while this is happening and I'm explaining what's happening to them, but also light language and then explaining back to them. So he has me follow him. So I follow him down this little gravel path. He shows me out over the canyon and the valley that's there. And he is like, communicating that this was his land and it was all full with water at one time and all these aquatic animals used to live there in the water and this is a basin and I was like okay I can see that like I'm I'm seeing all the animals in the water I'm seeing how it goes Um, and so then he was explaining what the conflicts were that were there and so we mediated through the conflicts with different 
uh, things coming onto the lands and different ways the lands had changed and shaped and resolved that stuff and then back to the being. And he looked over his shoulder and he had like his whole tribe, his, his like the rest of the beings, the mums, the, the kids, and they all come running down into the water. Because once I resolved the challenges that created the, the unrest in that space, then the land restores itself. And so the land restored itself and all the animals came back, but they were one with that water. They, they were like, it was sentient. So for them, the water was life. And so the beings were living in there. And as soon as the water came back into the basin, all the family members came running down to the water to be with their animals, to be reunited again. Um, so it was such a powerful journey that we went on. Um, and well, I can send that to you if you want to see what it was that we did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's so interesting because the amount of stuff that is going on out here but and, and it wasn't like uh, you know i get all this um frequency and vibration from the the, the pyramids because there are thousands of them you can just find mm -hmm. them anywhere and they're like naturally formed and they're like you couldn't make this stuff up it looks like it was carved into a pyramid mm. well within <laughs> china we have a couple of hundred probably close to you know over 200 pyramids and all the tops of them are lopped off in China because we would perform divination on the tops of the pyramids that brings us closer to the heavens using star stepping magic and other grid work that would connect with the constellations. So the pyramids are a reflection of the constellations on planet earth and it's formatted mm -hmm. that way. So that mm -hmm. connection is in there. And then we use the Bagua to move around it and then specific star stepping magic that then evokes the energy and it, you know, whatever you're interested in casting, weather magic, animal magic, plant magic, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it all becomes realized using these tools. And so, yeah, this is something, this is interesting because we have a, um, an event center out here where I do events. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're, if you're having a pilgrimage and you want somewhere to have an event, I have exactly the perfect place for someone to do that out here in the yeah. desert. Okay. Very, very interesting. What a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yes. Yeah. So I do a lot of my clients that are coming in depends on what mission I'm connected with or, or working on. And right now it's restoring those stargates and bringing those lands back in. And it is, um, for the purposes of moving our DNA, like being able to access more of our DNA original form so that we're not getting sick, so we're not having, it, it's just part of our awakening and our ascension. So that's what they're having me do. A lot of that is healing. So they'll have a client come in and if they are supposed to be a healer, that's who they're having me work with first is, is in individuals, I call it like the biggest game of freeze tag. If I can unfreeze a like fast runner, that's who I want to unfreeze first. So they'll send me like the fast runners, the healers, the people that are going to go and uh, use their gifts in a way that un unfreezes more people, right? So they'll send me an individual that is supposed to be doing this work, but they've been sort of uh, sidelined a little bit with like arthritis or something chronic. And I'm like, it's not chronic. It's because they were shifted off their energy. They get energy from their land and they've been moved off of that land. And so, and that can happen on the 5D side. So I can just bring them back energetically to the system where the energy is coming in and plug them back in. And then I can see their DNA strand and how it wraps and, and kind of twirls through. And they'll tell me like, this has too many freckles on it. The, the, the freckles that are on here is what's causing this. So you just scrape the freckles off or, or the, her kidney is not lit and the other one's working too hard. So to take the light off of this one and put it onto that one and then put jelly in it and, and create the jelly, we'll, we'll smooth it out and even out the energy. So most of my work is on the 5D side and then it integrates transfers here into the 3D and it's instant. By the time they're done session, they're like, I cannot believe that all of that happened in one session. They're like, yeah. how did you make my foot stop hurting? I can walk now. I don't have a back problem. I'm like, you never did have a problem. Like that, that, that was never there. It was all because you were missing a crystal. You were supposed to go to the Amenti Hall. And then you had to go to Stonehenge because the, the grid underneath Stonehenge isn't activated. And the dragons were looking for you. And they're like, what? 
But yeah, it's like when we go on these guided meditations, to me, when I connect with their energy, their spirit team comes in and speaks with my spirit team. So instead of me putting them under hypnosis and them accessing their their um, like subconscious and all of mm. those pieces, I just connect with them and our higher selves connect. So I am there as my higher self and communicating with them. And so they yeah. come along with me on that ride. So yeah. I'll say like, now they want us to go here and now I can see the, the beings, they're telling us to do this and we're going under here and this is a pyramid. This is what you have to touch. And then I use my light language as a healing tool, but not just a healing tool. It like penetrates deep with inside them in their inner bodies to be able to reset things for them uh, so that they can attune to a place where they can embody the information that's needed that they've been missing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want the audience to understand that, you know, you, you have different levels of ascension um hypnosis is a dirty word but it's an entry level levels of consciousness where you're operating doing something like psychic if i do a psychic reading on someone or mediumship or channeling this is dimensions up and beyond the 3d 4d 5d that we're talking about mm -hmm. right now these are these you know when 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 natalie's uh channeling things this is a you know five and above i mean you could it's endless i mean you really dimensional wise it could be you could be operating at the 31st thousandth dimension for all we know you're just accessing information and so mm -hmm. you know uh, there's all these you know entry points and people need to realize it's what's important and i like to always help people understand is there's so many thousands of different ways to access so stuff and there's never a right or wrong way. You just need to start validating it within your reality and confirming it is true to you. And when it's true to you, then that's all you need to be concerned with. And I always tell people, your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with. And then, of course, authoritarians rise up and they're like, oh, that's really dangerous. You, you can't give people that kind of power. The idea that they can think for themselves and they can validate what is true to them is their truth. That sounds very, very on the dangerous side. I'm like, okay, well, you've identified yourself. <laughs> and you're at and you're on frequency, and that's completely okay. And yeah. and you know, if you ever need any a leg up, or you want me to give you a helping hand to help you get to a higher level, let me know. I'm here, or you're operating where mm -hmm. you are. But most people don't perceive that. They don't realize that they're doing it because it's on an unconscious level. Absolutely. I just tell people in the channel in class, all you need to know is uh, a, a clear yes and a clear no. However you get your clear yeses and however you get your clear no, that's going to be unique to you. And there's no right, there's no wrong. Just make sure that if you, this is equivalent to here on earth where we, if someone gives you a map and you don't know what a legend is and you don't know where the legend is or how to read a legend, you could get lost pretty easily. But as soon as somebody gives you that squiggly line actually means a water, a river, or a stream, you're like, oh, I know how to, where to tell you that I, I'm like by this water, river, or stream. Like it's it's becomes that easy that somebody could give you the missing piece, but yet it feels like you are so lost, like if you don't have that legend. And all you need to know is a clear yes and a clear no. Feel it in your heart or feel it as your heart increases or have a bird that flies by which is your clear yes like whatever your clear yes is some people use a pendulum i use uh, muscle testing i also run it through my heart space but i and as you grow and um move forward in your ascending journey and access more stuff your levels of discernment will need to be higher and so then i say use two levels of yeses and nos one to one to make sure and one to cross-reference it because you need a, you need a, a, a secondary point that it says okay yeah yeah this is a yeah and something else okay we got two yeses we're good um, so as long as you have a yes and a no and you have an open heart um, that your heart really when I first awoke into this um, that was their first mission they sent me on look you you do not have the parts of your heart are missing I was like say what how does that happen and they're like you can't do this work until your heart is restored. And I'm like, my heart's restored. I say it is and it is. And they're like, no, it isn't. 
And I'm like, what do I need to do? And they're like, that's the right question. I'm like, okay, so uh, what do I need to do? Where am I going? What's happening? And they're like, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. And in learning these lessons, you're going to have to go through, they're going to be hard lessons, but in obtaining these heart pieces back for yourself, you'll be able to guide, um, you'll be in a position where you can guide other people because at this point, you you don't have uh, the heart pieces that are there that can fire up. And that's an essential piece of uh, moving through the, the different dimensions and be able to, to pull in information. Yeah, I mean, that's a beautiful uh, poetic like definition of that. Um, when you look at it like that, I always tell people, your limit of how you perceive your reality, your sensory perception, is you and your imagination. So when you realize that you are at the helm of this, this programming, then for you to create it. So clear, clear senses are determined by how, how wide is your scope of consciousness? So they either become the, the basic five add on a sixth and a, and a spattering of a couple of others, or they're infinite in their in mm -hmm. sensory perception. And that is validated by your own experience. I mean, I remember when I first turned on aura reading, it, it, it came in the form of this actual, you know, Taurus field that was visually vivid. Mm -hmm. And I was like walking around with a bubble. So I was bouncing mm -hmm. into people and <laughs> that's, that's kind of crazy. I remember I was so out of, I was so out of it, that experience. I thought I was on some mind bending like drugs because that was a level mm -hmm. of shift within my consciousness. And it was through the specific Qigong training that activated that sensory perception. And then all of a sudden the lights turned on and I had 5,000 things coming at me at once. And for anyone that has a fearful perception, or that's how they run their reality, it's called a nervous breakdown, i.e. a psychotic mm -hmm. episode, i.e. Um, I don't want to do this anymore. And it was, quite frankly, you know, probably 72 hours or five days of really processing what, whether I want this, because it was too mm -hmm. much. So I'm looking at everything and I get access instantly. Wherever my eyes go, aura comes up, images come up, energy comes up. It's like when I read someone's aura in five seconds and I've never met them before and they go, how the hell do you even know this? It's just information. It's just sitting there. So all I do is go through the organs and the energy, the uh, energy uh, body, and I can determine the virtue for, versus emotion. And it gives it to me right there in front of me. And then, you know, you want mm -hmm. to add in, okay, what's the, this the most deficient, weakest link, what's excessive or deficient, and the emotions come up, the state of mind, your mental, emotional, physical, all within seconds, boom, done, and people freak out. They're like, how, do, how the hell do you do that? How do you even know anything? How do you, you can't tell me I have uh, an impotence uh, issue. How do you even know this? How, what, listen, your energy center is the color of mud when it, yeah. should be, it, when it should be like a phosphorus orange uh, illuminating color, which would give me a very, very balanced frequency. And that's not mm -hmm. happening. So then it just shows me how deep you need to change the frequency and the vibration of that energy center to bring it back up to that level. So then all of a sudden your libido comes up, all of a sudden your state mm -hmm. of confidence, your well-being, your, your you know, feeling in lust of life again just from that energy center being that deficient and then that pours over into an excess where you know other parts your first energy center is highly overcharged so you know well, well, what is that what do you mean you're a control freak and you have more boundaries than you know, <laughs> uh, you know necessary necessary and so you, you need to now adjust how you perceive your reality and decide what you want to do, mm -hmm. but the excess or, you know, looking at their spleen energy and it's just overloaded and, and you just, you can instantly see someone's a control freak and they're like, how do you even know I have OCD? Cause you, you're, you've got, have you ever seen, have you ever heard of uh, kiss, kiss the band kiss? And they're like, yeah. Have you ever heard of their song psycho circus? That's what's going on inside your head. Mm -hmm. Right. Now. And they're like, holy crap. How do you know that? 
These it's just information. And so it, it, it kind of got, I, I remember one of the first times this happened and I was in, in the presence of a, 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 a very well-renowned psychiatrist who had over 30 years experience and she was learning other things more metaphysical at the point. And she was in, in my presence and I started going, all I did was look at her and go, holy crap, you, you should not be helping people. This is a lot. And so my personality was expressing itself. <laughs> you should not be in the position you're in helping people with what problems they have because you got so many problems, my friend. Mm -hmm. And it was like threats. It was like, and I only did it a couple of times. Then I realized I got to bring it down a couple of notches. Things can be altered instantaneously. You know, I only mm -hmm. ever did it once when I gave someone a, their life reading and I gave them, I told them, hey, look, they tell, they tell me you're going to die in two months and five hours. And they're like, what? And they died in two months and five hours. And I was like, why did you mm -hmm. do that? They're like, well, you need to realize the power of this conscious information. And I said, so can we change this? They're like, yep, you're going to alter it mm -hmm. instantly. And so never again have I ever given someone a life timeline because that can mm -hmm. be altered immediately. But, you know. Yep. Got, I got the example going, yeah, they, they died two, two months and five hours later. And I'm like, this is not very nice. I didn't want to like, mm -hmm. you know, was a, well, now you understand the magnitude of the power of information that you're receiving and what that does to someone that is not completely what we like to call um, in the Wu Ji, which is mm -hmm. the, the stillness the consciousness, the space. If you're not there and you're still operating in a duality, you need to be very mindful about how you transmit the information you're receiving because it can That's it, it could have a, a, a rippling effect on someone that is not in the same state of consciousness that you're in. And I'm like, I, I, I get it. And so you sort of like, you, you notch it down and you go, hmm, I'm just going to slow down on this. And, you know, because every time I do a reading on someone, I go, you sure you want me to? Yeah. It's, yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm honestly going to ask you, do you really want me to give? Yeah, because in their mind, they're like, what does this guy know? He's not going to tell me anything. And then when the yep. information starts coming out, the first response is, oh, well, you know what? I feel really good about sharing this. I needed to heal from this myself. And I, you know, I'm, I feel okay with sharing this information with people. Well, it's after the fact because it just comes out. I'm just giving you it. Right. Hit up, hit just up, the messenger. Up, and, and, and it always starts with, I feel really good about sharing. And then within 72 hours, I hate you. You shared this with the world because there's a realization. There's a lot of things that are going on. And that's why I always cripple check. I'm like, do you really want to hear this? Yeah. I want to go straight ahead, Mr. Psychic. <laughs> Mr. Clairvoyant, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I don't, I don't use any of those titles because I'm just a Taoist priest. Yeah. It just so happens in the category of that. We go in depth in, in all things, energy, frequency, vibration. The metaphysical realm is the reality. 5D and above is, is where I live and love to be. It just mm -hmm. so happens all these other things happen. But, you know, yep. do, you, do you find you need to filter your information at any point or you just, you just hand it out? Um, no, I had a rule that I established when I gave a bad reading one day. Um, so that was a, <laughs> that was my point where I was, it was similar to yours. When you tell someone they're going to die and they die, I, you, you kind of went, hold on a second. Um, but for me, it was thankful. when I first started, they were thankful afterwards and they, they've, okay, they've yeah, been, yeah. and they've been sharing ever since. But it was it right. Was, you wouldn't call it a bad reading. Like it, it was still, a, you know, enlightening reading. Um, same yeah. thing. So, it, like for me, it was when I first awakened. They told me get into Facebook, uh, free groups, and just start pulling people that we tell you to pull. And I'm like, okay. So I'm pulling people, and then the information's coming through me. And I'm like, okay, it's great. And then. Um, there was this one particular lady who said like, look, I remember this horrific event that took place. Uh, I was like, okay, yeah, let me drop in and have a look. So I drop in and I'm looking and I see the event taking place. I'm like, yep, that happened. 
she like breaks down sobbing and she's like, this is impacting all areas of my life. This is like, I'm not functioning. And I'm like, okay, like, oh, like, what do you want? That's great. Like that sucks. But you know, I'm just <laughs> telling you and confirming you with you what you see. And I'm agreeing that yes, that took place. And she's like, well, I'm not sure if it did or didn't. And I'm like, well, there is a gentleman. He looks like this. She's like, yes, that's exactly what he looks like. I'm like, so what's the problem? She's like, um, I have never had access to that gentleman. That individual has never been in my life. That person that you're describing that I see, how did he have this traumatic event take place with me? Um, when like both my parents say there's no possible way I was left with him as a child. He has not been in my life as an adult. Like how, has, how does this happen? Uh, and so I'm looking again, I'm like, you're definitely a child when this is happening. She's like, yes, that's how I see myself. I'm like, there is this room, there is a position, this is what's happening. She's like, yes, same thing. I'm like, it happened. And so afterwards I get off the session and I was like, guys, what the heck was that? Like that was extremely painful for this lady. Like, what was that? And they were like, we're telling you that we're giving you this because um, you need to know how to use discernment. That was darkness that came in and darkness that came in and altered her reality. And you saw what was altered. And so you confirmed the dark altered reality that she was living. And I was like, uh, <laughs> so how do we make sure that, that never happens? And she's, they're like, this, this starts your lessons of discernment. This is why we ask that you, you don't just go in and just, oh, I know how to channel and off you go. Like, no, there, there is procedures and steps and best practices, so to speak, that you'll learn from your guides that will teach you how to, how to move forward or your teachers, whoever, but you, it's a process. And so they were saying, remember, you saw this black portal hole in that lady's house and you helped her husband. I was like, yeah. And they're like, whenever you see a black portal hole, these are the practices that go with that. These, this is darkness is in her house that is corrupting their minds and giving them false information and making it feel true. And it felt so true. You could smell what was happening. Like it, it was so real what was taking place. So I was like, how does that happen? And they're like, the same way the light can come in, the same way the dark can come in. So you have to discern. And I was like, so make sure then from now on, if I see something or if you guys give me information of something, uh, I'm going to cross-reference it and check it to make sure it's, it's discerned properly. But anything that I know, I'm going to tell this individual. So if it's going to be upsetting and give a nervous system triggering response to them, don't tell me what it is because I never want to upset my clients in that capacity ever again. And they're like, uh, are you sure? I'm like, I never want to know because I, whatever you tell me will come out of my mouth unfiltered. And they're like, okay. I'm like, I can't channel and think at the same time. Like if I'm channeling, I'm not thinking I'm, I'm turning that piece off. It's passing the, the analytical mind. And so I was like, this needs to be established. And so they're like, okay, so it is. Uh, so that's been my, um, established rule from the beginning uh, almost is like if it upsets a person's nervous system and triggers them and they should feel better when they leave they should not feel worse so don't tell me things i will just continue to keep telling them <laughs> yeah. oh I, this is just absolutely fascinating i um i was just getting um i was thinking that we should get together and do a a group like uh uh, exploration of some of these uh, spaces out here um, because yes. I've never heard of a um, there was a, a radio show back in the day um, there was a a, a, um, a guy by the name of Art Bell have you ever heard of this guy Art Bell mm -hmm. he had this sort of like uh, paranormal channel and so if you've heard of have you heard of Jeff Mara Jeff Mara podcast Anyway, I don't um, follow most people. It's, it's, well, yeah, it's, so, so it's, he, he had a podcast and he basically formed this podcast around his fascination with this Art Bell character who used to be, you know, for 20 plus years out in the desert here in Vegas. He, mm -hmm. he broadcasted his show about the paranormal and, and, and so he's out here and he, ha he used to live not too far from where I can access. He's dead now, right? Physically. Okay. But he 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 harasses me quite often. Didn't realize he was even here. And then found out that I can literally 
drive to his house from where I am in like five minutes. Uh, and then I find out that he and Dolores Cannon would do like telethons and marathons where she'd get on the phone and they'd be answering phone calls for two and three days yeah. where people would call. Oh, wow. Francis. I'm like, you can't make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. like, mm. But it's like, there's a treasure trove out here. And so, you know, outside mm -hmm. of Vegas, it's about a hundred miles. There's the, the, the nuclear testing site. Okay. It's like area 51 underground, all this kind of crazy mm -hmm. stuff. And that's where people gravitate to all this stuff. Little did I know. It's like, I'm like, I had no idea until I'd actually moved here. Mm -hmm. and bought a house and went, I'm oh. about five minutes away from the stuff because they're like, get out there. You got to be out there. You got to do all this stuff out there. This is where it's all happening. Yeah. And so I'll go around like um, casinos and then interact with all the spirit entities and then do a rundown of where the hot spots are so that you can come out as a tourist and go to the hot spots where the highest frequencies are and you could sample the energy and then interact with uh. the spirit want to so it's like i'll go through each casino and then there's also configurations where they're like this is wired so everyone who walks through this particular space loses they lose oh they lose wow it. yeah so and it's configured with the 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 sacred geometry on the floor also they're having people putting specific types of spells on the actual space in a deeper level oh, of feng shui wow. And it's like, man, they're diabolical. They're diabolical. Oh. So you have to go in a certain entrance and 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 connect with specific specific spirits of the of the statues that are created, and then you'll win money. Okay. If you go through the front door, you're gonna lose. And they design it that mm -hmm. way. It's kind of like crazy, man. But there's so much stuff out here. There's so much fun. It's like we should definitely wow. you know, do some type of like group. A channeling thing and experience it because I want you to experience it. I mean, you're already sampling it. You, yeah, you know, yeah. sampler you, but you know, that's yeah, what we, can do. we can access this stuff. And it's like, why do you need to, you know, wait? Let's explore. It's exciting, mm. um, but uh, it's 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 exciting to have you as my new friend and realizing yeah. that we have these, you know, these access. And why not share it with people? Because it's it's crazy stuff. Um, uh, branding. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's so many, like you said, so many ways to access and so many different things out there. There's not necessarily one size fits all. It's sort of whatever your unique genetic makeup and your unique DNA makeup and your unique experiences. Like it's all can like compiled together for your greatest good of this individual's awakening like they're every person's got their own journey and it's you have a specific role and so based on the role you have you'll be sectioned into lessons to allow your expansion to take place um and it, it like it's just a beautiful concoction of stuff uh, to help it all unfold um and it just sort of, I always think of it as, well, mine just happened, but it didn't. It's not like it just happened. If I had not had that child and not had that pain, not been involved in the emotion code and not been involved in people's understanding of people's nervous systems that, and not become a therapist, I wouldn't have been assigned a mission where I go into Egypt and provide therapy and counseling and better understanding, resolving that timeline like there i was selected and asked to go into that for a specific reason and it was years all my years of training that uh, and life lessons uh, that brought me to that um because a, a big part of that is my mediating started at birth <laughs> like you know i was dropped in as a new child because my parents separated and they didn't want to live in two houses. So they created an agreement that they would live in the same house and raise the children. And then my mom remarried and she brought his two children and him back to the house. And then we all lived harmoniously in his, hers and ours dynamic um, in this big old house. that was like 21 bedrooms or something like it was huge. And 
it was uh, my training to understand what people's nervous systems felt like when I was near them. What, what can this person say? What do they actually want to say? And how does it feel? So I was growing up in that environment and learning um, and then learned about how to interact with the spirit realm. Um, and now I have to do a certain process to allow um, they knock on my chest. So if they want to talk to me, they will send a frequency to my chest and it feels like I'm getting heart palpitations. And I'll have to say, hold on, somebody wants to talk to me and I will call them forward and let them say whatever they need to say. But there's a specifics around setting it up, setting up the parameters which and how you want to communicate with the different frequencies around you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. uh, it's incredible. There's just no, there's no one size fits all. It's just it, it's, mm -hmm. it's all variable. And you know, getting back to the the sensory perception, you can attune it to a level like my attunement is. I see my guides just like I see you. They just appear mm -hmm. just very vivid and they're audible so i hear their voices mm -hmm. and we have a conversation it is what it is that's just my allowing that expression and so as everyone has their own expression like where are you at wow i want that i was like you can have it it's just like let's mm -hmm. get you to that place where that is viable and validated by you as a sensory perception and it's a developed skill that's all it doesn't there's mm -hmm. no one that can't access anything so it, it basically wherever you are in your own level of sensory perception can vary but don't be limited by the story of you can always acquire a higher level of sensory perception in where you're at mm -hmm. from here that's my perception mm -hmm. that's how I see it and i find that you mm -hmm. know with then all of a sudden you have what I call uh, another uh, coined uh, Mr. The Miyagi effect. Okay, so you got mm. hillbilly hand fishing. Now you got the Miyagi. Mm -hmm. Miyagi. Miyagi effect is an interesting one. I'll I'll teach people and I'll keep imprinting all this information and all the all the codes, all the stuff is going into them, not only consciously but like on a high frequency level. And they're like, okay, so mm -hmm. I'm this practice and i'm able to access information and energy and all this kind of stuff and they're like you know okay and i'm like okay let's test this out so right now you've been driving around in your pinto mm -hmm. okay. i want you to pull over okay go to the hood you pull the hood up and you realize you have a lamborghini engine under there you're like where did the lamborghini engine come from and so this is the Miyagi effect. It's like, I'm done with you. This is like the same stuff over and over again. I'm doing the practice. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I feel like I'm getting somewhere, but I want more. And I'm like, okay. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, Daniel son. And that's that realization that people have. And they go, wow. And it doesn't stop. And what I've what I've noticed especially is the magnitude of the frequency and the energy it continually increases. So everyone that's mm -hmm. around my stratosphere or within my space, if they're coming my path or whatever, they always go. Well, just when I thought I couldn't feel energy anymore, it's even greater. Mm -hmm. how, how is that possible? How does that even work? And it's just about their expanding their consciousness. The, the more you merge as the universe and you have a realization that you are the universe, then it become you become one with all things. Nothing has a title. If I'm doing a healing on someone, I always use an example whether you know my kid falls over, scratches their knee, or they sprain their ankle, or someone hurts themselves, they have something more dramatic, uh, they burn their hand, they do something. I'm not sitting here getting in a lotus position, writing, lighting three incense, um, singing Kumbaya, getting into that state of consciousness, I shift right into 9, 10, 20 dimensions. And you're going to watch that transformation right now in that 3D reality, but it has no title. I'm not going, mm -hmm. I need you to heal. Latsu, I need you to heal this person. I need you to remove. No, 
when I experience it, I'm just there. I am the universe. I'm not asking myself. If I'm the universe, I don't need to ask myself, hey, universe, mm -hmm. you think you could uh, possibly help me out there? It's kind of like going, when you separate yourself, it's, a, it's like a grain of sand asking the beach, what are we doing today? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's not, that's, mm -hmm. not how, that's not how it works. It's just there, present mm -hmm. moment, past, present, and future, all as one that's realized. And so that's when you realize physical healing in this reality, mental, emotional healing in this reality. It happens now. It happens right this second. It's not a cycle of something mm -hmm. that you work over for mm -hmm. weeks, and months, and years. It's instantaneous. And that's part of the speed of where we're going and what we're doing. And um, it only gets greater. It gets greater and greater and greater. And I'm really excited to see where our friendship goes and, and the type yes. of exploration that we go on. Because I'd I'd love to take people on a journey with you and I and getting out there and doing some crazy stuff. Yes, that would be magical. <laughs> Amazing, beautiful. I'm so happy about our, our developing friendship. It, I mean, I, part of me when I, you had sent me a message, part of me was like, wait, how does he know who I am? Or like how, what I do or how far I go or where I go. Like how, how do you know these things? But then I realized, you know, like you, when you know, you know. <laughs> and so I'm like, he knows, he, he's, he knows. I'm like, huh, interesting. Yeah, well, you know, and, and the, the bond is created from many lifetimes before this and it just kind of gets realized. You know, I, I mm -hmm. always have people, um, I invite people to my podcast that are, that want to expand their consciousness. Only ever once that I have, I was, I had a, it was, a, it was, I had a conflict with it, but I brought this guy on and within 10 minutes, he was like, you got to stop the podcast, man. This is way too much for me. I can't do it. Just, oh, just wow. done. <laughs> and and it, it, it just is, it becomes so strong. The frequency is so high. Everything's happening. And then you realize, are you really, is this real for you or this is just like, hey, I was telling myself what I want to hear. I did that. I was working that hold expression. What do you call it? I'll fake it till you make it. Now I've kind of had a place where I'm around people that have actually make it and they're not faking it. And now I've got to like, I've got to, I've got to show them now what's going on here. And that's generally what happens. And it's only ever happened once. And so every person yeah. that I've ever had on my podcast has just been an incredible expression of consciousness and they're just mm. like awesome and ripple out into just this mm. it's just it's a profound that uh that you know that the universe shares these experiences with me and i get to share mm. them with you when we come together and we realize as one it's um it's i'm very grateful yeah it's a, it's a magical experience, uh, you know, when, and it's humbling, like when you have somebody that says, hey, you know what, I, I see your light. I see you shining your light over there. I, I see your authenticity. And I want to be part of your journey. And I mean, you could have looked at my follower number, you could have looked at how much content like you could have done any various of 3d type of things that make you think okay you know individuals typically when they are 3d bound and are doing the fake it to you make it model they tend to really emphasize and overemphasize the number of followers that people have <laughs> and so they're like oh yeah. i only have interviews with people that have above 10,000 followers right and <laughs> i am definitely not close to that so when i had a request coming in i was like why does he want to have an interview with me? I like, I don't have these followers. And then I'm like, oh, he knows. He, he sees my authenticity and my light. And that's what uh, he's asking. He's being genuine and asking, hey, you want to come and have a conversation that's a conscious, high level, authentic conversation about Ascension and how we can help and how we can support our, our listeners and having that conversation. And so I was like, okay, he knows. <laughs> it just goes so yeah. cool. It, it is. It's, it's like the side effect of social media. It, it's 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 sort of like a 
if you believe in humanity, you get disappointed. It's like, uh, oh my goodness, you know, uh, is it just end and beginning with humanity? No, not really. It, it, you know, that's mm -hmm. just another facet of of what you perceive as your reality, but it, it's way bigger than that. But you know, I mean, that's social media. That's the side effect that I've noticed is, you know, it is all about the 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 perception but it's not a, it's not the perception mm -hmm. we're talking about it's just the illusion and in most cases most of these people are not even like creating communities they're just uh, acquiring numbers which doesn't really yeah. in my opinion do much of anything other than i don't know i guess it makes you feel better i, I have no idea what the purpose of it is but uh. no, no that was kind of what my <laughs> My guide said to me early on, like, uh, because my background was in marketing. And so I had a huge, you know, when you're in marketing, you create huge followings. Um, and so they had me walk away and start a new niche and come in as I was awakening. They, I came into this one. And so um, they said, like, this time you're not going to do use the algorithm. You're not going to, you're going to just be authentically you. And we're going to, if we have a message that's coming in, you'll feel it and you'll transmit it like as you feel it coming in. You're not going to batch out your your content. You're going to just, you know, if you're walking the dog and you feel, you know, we have to do something, turn on the camera and do your thing, do your transmission. And I was like, okay. I'm like, so, but how are people going to find me if I'm not accumulating followers? Is that like, you don't got to worry about it. I was like, okay, uh, all right. Let's see yeah. how it is. And that's yeah. how it's been. The, the most magical people show up and are like, we see your light. Hi. Um, and it's been beautiful to be able to bring those individuals together in the same frequency. And those other individuals, they it's like a, a ripple of water. When you drop a stone and you see those ripples ripple outwards, those individuals have rippled outwards. And we have these new individuals coming up to the surface where they're like authentic and they are same frequency as I am. And they're just like, wait, we don't care about anything. We're just in the flow of divine energy and we're just, we're just doing our thing. Um, so it's been beautiful to see. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, that is in the, the true my true understanding of consciousness is we're we're, mm -hmm. we're a collective we're a singular and when you really are expressing that then it, it it's realized whereas it's more conceptual for a lot of people and it's more rhetoric and talking head sort of stuff and yeah yeah mm -hmm. i got it I'm conscious yeah yeah i'm conscious come on man yeah yeah conscious bro i'm conscious so it's mm. it's it, it's interesting but uh with that said, I'm gonna. Uh, we've done an incredible. We've had an incredible time. I mean, we're at like a couple of hours right now. Look at that. I mean, yeah. um, for me, you and I, yeah. I know we could talk forever, and we're gonna continue. I, I would be very grateful that you would uh, uh, accept another invitation when we go out and start, you know, exploring these things together. I would love to do that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in your future, uh, whenever you're available, because uh, there's some incredible stuff that we can tap into. And um, mm. it's just, it's really profound to show people these levels of awareness and then what, what you can do with it and where you go with it and how that's expressed through um, mm. just the nature of frequency. Because, I mean, it's really that simple. And people just can't mm -hmm. believe it's that simple until they experience it and go, it's that simple. Yeah. And when you really take it as a child like a childlike at face value, it's realized that way. And so mm -hmm. that's why I always tell people, be childlike in your nature and everything will be realized. There's no other, mm -hmm. there's not just, it is as it is at face value. You know, it's like, it's like uh, I, in passing, just this last thing, I remember the first time I did a distance healing and it was, mm -hmm. it was that, to that level. So, I had the programming, I had the ritual, all of this stuff was given to me. This is how you do it. I'm like, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. It just says it here on paper. And so at the time, this is decades ago, a friend of mine called me up and said, I can't meet you. I'm not going to see you. You know, I've got a sprained ankle. Back in the day, we had rotary phones, you know, on the wall. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, 
that's cool. We'll catch up next week. And she's like, yeah, my ankle's the size of a, a watermelon. And I'm like, oh. Oh, no. All right. Well, that's that's cool. We'll catch up next week. And then she's getting off the phone. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on. Guess what? Let me try something. I just learned this today. I was like, let me try this good healing. I'm like, what's the worst thing that happened? Nothing. And so I'm mm -hmm. like, I sat there. I read over it in my mind, the steps, and then basically repeated this very incantation. Heal, 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 heal. And it went from heal, 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 heal to on the other end of the phone, WTF, but it wasn't WTF. It was an <laughs> unabbreviated form of that. And she freaked out. And she's like, what? I go, so so what's going on? She's like, my ankle shrunk before my very eyes and I'm standing on it and I don't have any pain. And I'm like, good. Mm -hmm. Bullshit, you're full of it. And she goes, No, I'm dead serious. I don't know what kind of crazy witchery crap that you're into, <laughs> but this took place before my very eyes, and I'm standing on my ankle. And so that was my entry into magic and healing for the first time. And I was like, mm. If I take it at face value, and that's why I always remind people to take everything at face value. There's nothing more. You don't have to get all caught up yep. in, you know, this. You 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 got to think really hard about it. All of this is realized immediately. There is no exception. So mm -hmm. you have all this stuff realized. It's happening. The question is: Is are you going to replicate the frequency that's going to create the result in this 3D reality? And that's all. That's that's all it is. And if you understand mm -hmm. the simplicity of going, is that all I have to do? Then I think it and it becomes real. Yes, that's it. Not a layered in more detail, bam, it's on. And so people, when you start taking it like that, you can go through and you can realize you can take your channeling class, you can do other things, you can take one of my classes, whatever. You will come to that realization through the material and the frequency transmission that we've given and imprinted into the material, into the training, that you will now acquire this level of sensory perception. Boom. Mm -hmm. That's simple. And yeah, that's so, exactly it. You know, that's I mean, beautiful. It, 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 it doesn't, uh, honestly, it hasn't changed. Yes, I understand all the rituals and I train people in all this uh, internal alchemy and stuff like that. But truly, I always tell people, natural born life 30 years in as an og in this stuff you can have your realization in the next 30 seconds just being present with me mm -hmm. it's like okay so what does that mean it means mm -hmm. that you can acquire the level of sensory perception that i gathered and it's only a consciousness of past life experiences that brings me to that point and i i realized mm -hmm. that over 30 years ago and i think maybe it made it easier that that was my first experience, first channeling, first healing instantaneously. And it just sort of tri trickles out and transmutes into more and more and more. And I've seen it so many mm -hmm. thousands of times that I'm as excited as the first time, but I, I, mm -hmm. I, I have confirmed that it is real over and over again, that that is the reality. And I mean, that's, that's the nature of it. It's like, it's that simple. Start it. Mm -hmm. It, realize it embody it live it breathe it and it will be yours and i mean it's like the old four minute mile the second you experience it from a, yeah. even from let's let's just talk about your neurology a neuroscience uh, neuro mm -hmm. background the second someone and this is something that you use to synchronize people is you use the mirror neurons at the base of your brain to replicate mm -hmm. anything it becomes instantaneous. You can, that's why you have the group mentality, the, the cause and effect, which would be a transmit transmission from Newtonian to, to quantum realization is that the second you realize it, the second you're exposed to it, it becomes yours. And when you, when you can realize that and accept that, and you don't have this compartmentalized version, well, you know, you need to wrap yourself up in this level of protection. And you're because I always remind people, it's like, okay, you that you don't do the protection part when you realize there's no duality. And people are like, what? It's like, okay, you have to absolutely be fearless. 
or you need mm -hmm. you need to frame your protection or whatever you perceive it at. But when you realize you're fearless, the protection is unnecessary. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's, there's entities out there. There's spirits. There's other things. Well, what are you trying to say? That sounds very negligent. No, because if you are me and I am you, what is there to be afraid? What, what am I afraid of? Mm -hmm. You know, well, yeah. it doesn't, everything is a transmutation of consciousness. So if I truly allow that to be my realization, then it is all a part of me. And so the higher yep. the frequency, you just transmit. It's kind of like when I get my kids, I have like six kids. So like we're going to bed, boom, everyone, let's go. Cool. And I just take the littlest one, synchronize their heart and their breathing. And then I just go around the room, bang, 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 bang. And in 30 <laughs> seconds, we're like, lights out, good night, because I just hook into one. All I have to do is hook into one aura. And then I, I replicate their That's breathing true. and they stick with mine. And then we just go around the room and everyone's like, dad, you were going to tell me a story last night. And yes, that's right, son. It's sleepy bites time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're just, it's like, ah, you know, I'm not, I'm storytelling's a little bit overrated tonight. Daddy just wants to go to sleep a little earlier. Boom. And, and that's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's, equalizing when you teach people channeling that's what you're doing you're connecting all these energies as one and they're mm -hmm. they're whatever you're transmitting they're experiencing it's like it's mm -hmm. happening right now that's that's what you're doing it's like whoa yep. it's nuts and you know it, it's like you make it effortless and it can be it is but it's how people perceive it and so there is Absolutely. a level of development that comes with some people and some people will just immediately be in the presence of you and go, Whoa, man, I can't believe this. This is crazy. And then some of them might be a little bit on the slower track. They need a fast track pass or whatever else they need. But you know, as long as they're, as long as they're in the presence of you, they're going to be realized at some point or another. Yeah. Well, typically it's the frequency of our voices. Our, our voice holds this particular frequency and um, so when I was building out my healing course, initially, they just, my guides kind of came to me and they were like, we want you, we need more healers to come into their space and into their, their selves. And we want to have this, um, this course kind of put out. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, and so originally they just had me do the Egyptian method, which is like a healing chamber and bring them into the chamber and, and teach like what you see and how it goes. Um, and so I was like, okay, good. Like, we're going to launch the course, or whatever. And they're like, oh, I started having all these other beings arrive. Like the Syrians came in and they're like, oh, teach them the Syrian method. I'm like, I don't use a Syrian method. They're like, oh, so they're explaining what it is and having me do that. So I put that out. And so each kind of being kind of came forward and said, oh, me too. So the Egyptians came, the Syrians came, the Octorians came. Um, there was a couple other beings that also came in and, and said, like, also use mine as well. But I was like, what do they all have in common? And they all have my voice because I'm not actually teaching them a theory. There's no theory involved in this. This is all about remembrance because you've already done it. You don't need to be taught the theory. You already know. It's just in there. It's awakening what you already know by listening to the words I'm telling you. And the words I'm telling you isn't, you know, put one hand over here, one hand over there. Now do like, no, it is. I'm bringing you to the chamber and now watch over here because remember when this happens, you've done it before. And so it's the equivalent of, you know, a night out and the next day you're like, I don't remember any of that. And then your friend shows up and they're like, you did this and this and this. And they're like, Oh, now I suddenly remember. Yes. Yes. I remember when, you know, we sat down and we had cake and we had this birthday thing. Like I remember that now. But before they listen to that frequency and you walking them through the events of what took place, they, they're like, I'm not a healer. I don't know. But I am drawn to plants and I do like to study like how to, you know, create tinctures and stuff. And you're like, then you're a healer. So just take the damn course. <laughs> listen to what the things are. Awake what's inside of you and then let your gifts expand out. Yeah. Like, that sounds too easy. Well, then you've constricted yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah contracted contracted well this contracted, has been incredible yeah. my friend incredible and i'm really grateful that you have 
spent your time with us today and sharing mm -hmm. with us, um, your insight, your incredible insight and your, your versatile um, perception and all the things that you do from channeling to healing to, you know, programs to explorations in other dimensions through group uh, uh, training. I mean, what can you, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave uh, the audience with this. What is your definition of the nature of consciousness? The nature of consciousness. Hmm. That is a widespread uh, question. Um, for me, the nature of consciousness is about connecting. If we can connect with our heart centers, we can stay in authenticity and we can stay in divine flow. Then we continue to learn and expand and deeper connections occur at that point. And so if you think of it in a 3D way, it would be, we all know how to swim. And so you can doggy paddle to what you think is the closest landmark, or you can just lay on your back and float. And wherever it takes you, it will be the least amount of effort. And so if you're floating and in divine currency and divine, divine flow, it feels a little bit at first, when you first start to do it, it feels counterintuitive because you want me to do nothing to go somewhere faster. It doesn't seem right. And so I tell my clients, stop, stop using your analytical mind and thinking about this and that and the other. I could do this to get out of my situation. I could do that. And I've tried this and I'm going to try that. That's you thinking that's not divine flow. Cause you are trying to manage this situation with, within yourself, within your own means. That's not divine energy coming in. That's not consciousness coming forward. That's, that's not how you want to do it. You want to turn that off. You want to surrender and you want to roll over and float. So if you've ever learned to swim, laying on your back and doing nothing, feels like you're going to die. Like it feels like you're going to sink. This is not how you swim. How could you lay still and do nothing and still float? So it feels a little counterintuitive at first. Um, but once you switch off that analytical mind and get into the divine flow and are not attached to an outcome, you can really go far quickly. So I would say that um, you just have to you know, do less to go farther and to just trust and surrender and let that consciousness um, come in. And like you're just tapping in, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And where can our audience find you what's going on with you what's your what's your current journey into awakening what what are you doing what are, what's on your agenda these days i'm going to put all your socials at the bottom of this video uh, and um i just want you to share with the audience what's going on with you yeah so for me right now uh i'm doing my channeling classes the two channel classes and the healing class um, I, uh, they're really prioritizing me being a mom because that helps my own ascension journey uh, to be able to help more people. Um, what else am I doing right now? A lot of that Stargate stuff is coming in, uh, helping a lot of people get what they need by going into the halls of the Menti. There's a lot of books and helping people come online with their light language, um, and feeling what that energy feels like. So walk, walking the journey with people is what's happening. A lot of people are asking to get their businesses up and running. So that's starting to come in now as a new request is, how do I, I know I have these gifts, but how do I get my business set up? So I'm using some of my business knowledge to help bring, uh, bring those guys online as well. Um, so people can find me. I have my website. It's natalienadine.com. And my YouTube channel, they can find that at natalienadine.com slash divine YouTube. So it's divine YT, divine YouTube. Um, and those are probably the best ways. My Instagram is at divine transmission. Um, and I do a lot of transmissions, how to's like, um, I just had one that was really cool. I had a client who had a, guide and the guide was uh tibetan and he showed up and he was bright white light and then he didn't transmit any words to me 
and he didn't say anything and he was silent and so he went walk he, he greeted me by saying nothing and then he turned and walked and expected me to follow him so i'm walking we get to this big temple this big tower type temple and i'm like i'm i don't know who you are i'm not going to just follow you blindly like you're going to say something he still not communicating i was like whatever fine i check with my guides my guides are like yes follow him i'm like okay fine follow him into the temple and but that's when i realized if those those particular guides actually don't have a thought that we read and they don't have like they control their thoughts and they don't transmit words so it was just doing a youtube or sorry a um transmission about that because some people will say i can't connect with my guides my guides don't speak but i feel them but they just don't speak and i'm like are they part of this this particular situation was what i encountered and they didn't speak and they were quiet uh there was nothing yeah. that came off of them yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's so many variables it's like uh it's never ending there's the possibility mm -hmm. are endless and in how mm -hmm. you information which is the exciting part and no way no specific way is right or wrong it just is that moment mm -hmm. that expression, which is so exciting well i want to thank, thank you my you. friend and i'm going to put all your stuff under this video so i want everyone to check uh check natalie out and um again i want to thank you for sharing your time with us today and i'm very grateful the to the Dow mm -hmm. for bringing you into my life and uh another new friendship and we can explore uh the uh, pyramids out here and other things all all in the nature of consciousness and i'm excited about that too so we'll set that up soon sooner yeah. than later I'll, I'll i'll be pursuing that uh commitment from you uh, in the future so we'll be we're yes. excited to do that so on that note yeah, i want to thank you for coming on the channel and um yes and we will talk very soon, my friend. And I am your Thank humble you. servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Ching. I'll see you in the next one, guys.